Right, so for those of you waiting for the 15-inch MacBook Air, there's more details. We're gonna see this launch pretty soon, so let's delve into it. So pretty credible source Ross Young tells us, panel production for the 15-inch MacBook Air is ongoing as we speak. It began in February and then increased in March, and another ramp up should happen in April and while the launch allegedly could happen between late April and early May, I doubt that. I think it makes more sense we see a WWDC release and Ross Young to save himself does say he does not know the precise launch timing so that does heavily suggest his prediction on the release date is going to be false. And yeah, WWDC release makes the most sense. I doubt we're seeing a spring event. There's basically been no talk regarding that. And since Apple did release the yellow iPhone 14 refresh via press release, that does heavily suggest Apple has no plans for a spring event and we're getting hardware at WWDC instead. So yeah, that's basically everything. Now for those wondering what to expect with the 15 inch MacBook Air, this basically is gonna be the same as the M2 Air, but of course with a bigger screen. But ultimately, as I've said for ages, I've been wanting a cheaper big screen MacBook. I don't need the performance of the 16 inch. I would much rather have the base level M series chip that offers better battery life with a big screen for a low price and that could be the 15 inch if the price is right. Because yes, that's what I'm kinda worried about. Apple could overprice this to upsell consumers to the MacBook Pros, but hopefully that's not the case. I'm hoping this is around $1,300 and the 13 inch goes down to $1,100. I think that would be the perfect pricing for these MacBooks but let's see what happens. And yeah, considering Apple's had a 40% drop year over year in terms of sales for Macs, I think having this 15 inch at the right price is crucial because it can be a very popular machine if it's not too expensive. And yeah, I think that's partly why the M2 MacBook Air is not as popular as it could be because it was too expensive at launch. And when you upgraded the RAM and storage, it got very similar in price to a 14 inch MacBook Pro. So of course, it made no sense to get the Air, so I think pricing for these Macs is crucial and Apple should give us lower prices. And yes, I know people are already going to joke that Apple never lowers prices, but that's actually completely false because when the MacBook Air was redesigned in 2018, it was $1,200. But Apple then gave us consistent price cuts with every new version, so the 2019 MacBook Air was $10.99, then the 2020 Intel and M1 version of the MacBook Air was $9.99, and so since we just got a redesign with the M2 model, I'm expecting the M3 and the M4 version to slowly get cheaper. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this, it would be appreciated. Though I do want to say Apple's not the only one facing this. Basically every PC maker is seeing a huge decline in sales and that's because of the recession. But anyways, I'm hoping Apple does give us lower prices for their new Macs. Anyways, let's delve into your comments. So first of all, thank you Matthew for the compliment. You're always nice in the comments, I appreciate it. And they tell us, I'm sure I'm in the minority, but when I see pics of MacBooks, they look incredibly dated. Yes, the precious notch looks dated. I've browsed Windows laptops in stores, and many have bezels just as thin or thinner than MacBooks, with that an inch wide notch on the front of the screen. They look clean and modern, while the MacBook looks ridiculous in comparison. Still hating to see notches on other laptops, TVs, monitors, mirrors, etc. since it looks so great. So I do understand where you're coming from, definitely, but I'll be honest, I'm in the majority who can look past this. I've experienced the notch on the MacBook and the iPhone and I've had no issues. I usually forget they're there for the most part. But again, I do understand why you're annoyed. For those who can't look past it, it is a massive eyesore on the front. And so hopefully Apple can get rid of it pretty soon, but I do have a feeling Apple's gonna keep it for longer than we expect, since it does ultimately help MacBooks stand out. So I squish yarn? Interesting username, but anyways, they say I'm in need for a new laptop, so I can't wait. I'm a little bummed that next year they could release an OLED version, but I just can't wait a full year with my current setup. So I'll be honest, I have major doubts about the MacBook Air getting OLED next year because that would be a high-end feature that, of course, Apple's not going to debut with their Learn Max. They're going to give it to the MacBook Pro first, and then after a few years, they bring it down to their cheaper MacBooks. This happened with the Retina display, and heck, we still don't have 120Hz or Mini LED on the MacBook Air, so yes, I doubt we're going to be getting OLEDs anytime soon with these MacBooks. 
So regarding the 12 inch MacBook revival being killed off, no one you know says, that's a shame, but hopefully with the M4, M5 chip in the near future with a better manufacturing process, it does return. A 12 inch would definitely be a very, very nice laptop. It would be cool, fast, powerful, and thin. So yes, I'm very much hoping that's the case. Apple should not let go of the 12 inch MacBook design because as many have said, it's perfect for Apple Silicon because it's a very small and compact laptop and the efficiency of Apple Silicon would have been ideal for it. And so hopefully once a recession's over, Apple can of course reconsider reviving this. So at Miami 305 BLK says, I think the 12 inch MacBook was driven by Johnny Ives vision of laptops. And it seems Apple's now trying to distance themselves from radical design and be more utilitarian. So that's actually a very fair point because we saw this with the new MacBooks. They were thicker than the previous generation and gave us back the ports, but that's the way Apple should be going because the consumers wanted the ports back. And so sticking with the utilitarian design does make sense. However, even if the design as we know it does not return, I'm hoping Apple can bring back the 12 inch form factor because it makes so much sense to have a compact sub $1,000 laptop in the range. And so hopefully we do see a new 12 inch MacBook in the near future, but of course with a MacBook Air inspired design. And Brian agrees with this earlier comment and says, Ives always plays form before function. And yeah, that's definitely the case. And that came as a detriment to the MacBook experience because we had faulty keyboards, we had no ports. And overall, I'm happy that Apple's taking a more practical route with the design of their laptops. So at Johnny Hogg says, the greatest thing about a 15 inch air will be the much better speakers and a bigger battery and of course a bigger display. And yes, I'm excited for the battery life with the 15 inch air because we know how efficient the base M2 chips are. So of course, putting that in a 15 inch MacBook with a massive battery inside should give this ridiculous endurance. And I believe the 16 inch right now has 21 hours of battery life with the M2 Pro and the M2 Max. So now imagine a similar sized MacBook with the base M2 chip that could maybe give us 25 hours of battery life. And yeah, I'm also looking forward to the better speakers. The speakers with the 13 inch already are pretty good. But now again, with the larger size, the audio quality should be amazing. Anyways, tell me your thoughts regarding this in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one.